There are some big changes coming to the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule, especially in the playoffs. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So on Sunday night, Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic broke some 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule news, especially pertaining to the playoff portion of the schedule. So we'll be getting three new tracks in 2025 on the playoffs or in the playoffs rather so who's moving out of the playoffs that would be atlanta which you already knew about because that's going to the tnt portion of the schedule we also will be losing watkins Glen, not that unexpected there and we will be losing homestead which is a massive disappointment homestead sounds like it will move to march which it had been a few years ago as well uh, but it feels like it just gets lost in the schedule at that point and homestead is such a good race it deserves to be in the playoffs so what are the three tracks that we are getting in the playoffs that would be darlington being the first one and obviously that was expected right the olympic gear has kind of messed up the schedule this year so darlington will serve currently this year as the last race of the regular season next year it goes back to its traditional date on labor day well it's still on labor day this weekend or this year as well but traditional date in the playoffs rather so what are the other two tracks we are getting well SMI is replacing Atlanta with, drumroll, Loudoun, New Hampshire. Not exactly the hot spot destination you were expecting it to be. I know, I was not super psyched when I heard that either. Granted, the race this past weekend was entertaining, but when you look at it, you're taking out a super speedway, which I don't disagree taking that super speedway out, and that being Atlanta. But SMI does have other tracks that you could go to, specifically like, I don't know, Nashville, which is sitting there perfect in a perfect destination, a perfect market for NASCAR to have a playoff series race in. And I think they're probably worried about culture <laughs> at that time and in, in the NFL in general. So I can understand the logic behind it, but that is still a much more attractive destination than Loudoun, New Hampshire. Now, don't get me wrong. If they're going to run Loudoun in like late October with the, the long shadows, give me a golden hour like in 2001 when they ran the last race of the year there, the what Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, give me that. It looks cool on TV. You get fall foliage. It's season of the sticks. If you're into Noah Khan or however you pronounce his last name there, I'm sure some uh, white hippie girl will remind me how to say it. That song is super catchy. I will give it that. But give me that, right? Because you're not going to worry about the Patriots being competitive because they absolutely stink. I don't think anybody in the Northeast actually cares about college football. Boston College hasn't been relevant since Matt Ryan was there, and that was 18 years ago at this point. So, yeah, I think uh, maybe that's why they decided to go there. Does it deserve a playoff date? I would argue no. The racing there is fine, but when you look at the Gen 7 package, especially on short tracks with a short track package, it doesn't really race that well on flat tracks, and New Hampshire is the definition of a flat track at this point. So that will be in the playoffs. Who's the other date, the other track that will be making its NASCAR Cup Series playoff debut? Another drum roll, please. That would be Gateway. Worldwide Technology Raceway. I don't care. They're not paying me to say their name. It's Gateway, which we all know. Uh, again, I don't love it because you're putting in essentially the same racetrack as New Hampshire. Yes, they do have their quirkiness, right? The Gateway at least has... It's not symmetrical at either end you have different size corners on each end of the racetrack that's a little bit fun i will say that the strategy there from the race this year was definitely interesting is it a track worthy of a playoff date well maybe just from the standpoint that you don't have to worry about competing against the nfl in st louis too soon maybe <laughs> but you know they couldn't maintain an nfl team there and now you don't have to worry about competing against that in that market so it makes a lot of sense in terms of like the college football aspect of it as well obviously you have missouri but they're also rands in the sec illinois hasn't been relevant really in football brett bielham was going to stand up there with his rosy red face so at the end of the day it might make a little bit of sense but i don't love the fact that you're getting two tracks of essentially the same type of layout and then throw Phoenix in there as well. Now you have three basic one-mile tracks that are flat and don't necessarily race that great. At least Gateway has some strategy about it. New Hampshire was interesting from the rain standpoint, but is it going to rain then? Uh, who knows? It was semi-okay up until the rain came and then really spiced things up. And then Phoenix, Phoenix hasn't had a good race since 88 at this point. So yeah, I'm not sure necessarily the logic behind it i'm sure there is some sound logic and maybe it does just come down to not having to compete against football teams and things like that but man does it not seem that fun oh gateway's got the arch they've got nelly they've got kenny wallace fantastic well i 
the end of the day, I guess you don't have to compete against the NFL. So there's that one. And obviously, when the IndyCar schedule came out and we saw that the IndyCar date was a week after what their cup date was this year, you had to know that the cup date was getting moved around someplace uh, on the schedule for Gateway. Just did not expect that to be into the playoffs. So I think the bigger loss here is the fact that Homestead will not be in the playoffs. The playoffs now consist of five essential short track races, right? You now have Loudoun, New Hampshire, Phoenix, Bristol, and Martinsville. And if there's one thing we know about the Gen 7 car, it doesn't really race well on short tracks or flat tracks for that matter. So losing Homestead out of this is a huge bummer uh, for the most part, because now, you know, essentially what we're going to be left with outside of those five tracks are Kansas. Okay, great. Las Vegas should be pretty decent. Talladega, uh, if they're not saving fuel, maybe it'll be entertaining. The Roval. And then you also are left with Darlington, which of course should race really well. So I know people will be like, well, Homestead and Darlington, similar racetracks in the sense they run against the wall, eats tires. I get it. I understand that. But when you have to look at it from a competitive standpoint with this car, the Gen 7 car race is really good on intermediates, tracks like that. It doesn't race very well on the other tracks, which now kind of populate five half of the schedule for the playoffs. So it definitely is going to benefit uh, some teams in particular there. Hendrick Motorsports is going to have to finally try to win at New Hampshire again for the first time since 2012 when Casey Kane did it. That feels like a lifetime ago at this point. So it's a lot of changing things here. I don't love the idea of those two tracks going into the playoffs. Darlington, of course, deserves its date the southern 500 deserves to be in the playoffs a crown jewel should absolutely be in the playoffs but man losing homestead is a brutal blow and i think jordan's reasoning behind probably moving homestead to march is nascar needed another warm weather date there at the beginning of the season and obviously miami is a warm weather destination so it makes sense doing that versus having to go find another race out west since fontana's gone now it's just unfortunate that we lose homestead from this because that is a brutal blow but let me know in the comments what you think about both gateway and loud and getting added into the playoffs next year i guess we have to wait for it to formally be announced but jordan uh typically will never talk about anything unless he has it on good authority that is going to happen there so fully trust what his reporting is so let me know in the comments what you think like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog